everyone, I'm Dr. Gio Fernandez, and this video basically discusses about the project planning process. Project planning initiates once a project has been associated to a project team. That means there's a client who have got a problem and needs a solution for that problem because of which he has given that particular work to me or to my organization work, we consider it as a project. Without much ado, let's look into what are the various steps in project planning. Among the seven steps, the most important is specification. The second step is structure. The third step is project breakdown. The fourth step is task delegation. The fifth one is time estimation. Sixth is project control. And the seventh one is quality controls. Now let's look into what do we mean by specification. If we look at any project, it is nothing but a solution to a problem. Say for example, I belong to an IT company and one of my client has given me a project to develop a software for him. The reason why he is developing a software is because he has got a problem and the software is a solution to that particular problem. Oh, let's take another example. One of the shopping malls in Arunakulam has got a problem. The problem was that they have got approximately 1800 car parking spaces in their mall, but unfortunately, it was not fully utilized. People who get into the shopping mall car parking goes out thinking that there is no space available, even though there were approximately 350 to 400 spaces available. So the problem was that on a day and on average, there are approximately 300 to 400 car spaces being left vacant. And a car parking space left vacant means it's a loss for the shopping mall because it's a revenue generation area. So that was a problem. So they have developed a automation assisted car parking system where they basically use sensors and it guides the drivers to park the car on the free vacant lots and it guides suggesting on which area there is a car parking space is available it basically takes them there so that's a solution so for any project there is a problem and solution is the outcome of that particular project so as a project team first job is understanding the problem so in specification the very first step is to create a statement of the problem please mind not the solution once you have the statement of the problem you could sit with the client and understand what are the requirements and it has to be clear complete and it should eliminate any kind of contradictions and misunderstandings once we specify the entire project it normally contains errors so let's look at what are some of the common errors that is being put across the first one is the global context. In a project team, each person has been assigned a task. So I might not look at a larger perspective or I, I might not look at a global perspective or a larger picture. I do whatever work has been assigned. And sometimes if I don't look at where do I fit or what is the larger picture, the work that's been done by me may be undone by someone else so that it can be fit properly into the project or it might be duplicated. The next common error is interface. If you look at this, the customer wanted a swing with a tire, but when he explained it, the explanation went somewhere like this and this is how it was installed. That means in a project, we all know that there are a lot of interface between the client and the project team and the deliverables might not be appropriate. So the communication has to be perfect. Time scales, another source of error. The time frame has to be realistic in nature. For the sake of doing, don't come up with time frames. The externalities is another source of error. There's nothing but my work might be dependent on the work of others. So I should be very clear to those people that unless and until they give their work to me after they complete their work, then only I'll be able to start. Unless and until I communicate it properly, if they're not giving it to me on time, automatically there's a delay in my project. The resources. 
That's an, again another source of error. The resources might not be available. The resources could be human. The resources could be capital. The resource could be energy. It could be entrepreneurship, management, time. It could be anything. So it might not be available. So these are some of the sources of error. So specification is a major step where you are supposed to understand the problem, where you're supposed to understand what is the requirement of the client, where you're supposed to be clear on understanding what exactly has to be done. Because this is the base of your project. Now let's look at the second step. Once the specification is done, the role of the project manager is to create a structure. What are the tasks that has to be accomplished? What is the relationship of each task to the specification so as to achieve the desirable objectives? Who is going to do what? And when will it be done? Once a structure has been developed, it's like a plan which helps a particular team to understand how the work has to be done. And once a structure has been developed, it helps in developing the work breakdown structure. Now let's look into the third step, the project breakdown. Break the project into tasks. Break each task into subtasks and continue until all items are doable and understandable. Let's take an example, a common example. Construction of a house is a project. So we are going to divide it into various tasks. The first one is filing. That's for the basement. The second one is constructing the structure. The third task could be plumbing. The fourth task could be putting the windows, the doors, etc. The fifth task could be electrical work. The sixth task could be interior designing. The seventh task could be putting tiles. The eighth task could be painting. Now, let's break down it into subtasks. In piling, there has to be some contractors going to come up with the equipments. There has to be some people or contractors going to support you with the material. Let's take example of constructing the house, the structure, people, resources there, masons. There has to be people who's going to provide you material. There has to be a vendor, a cement vendor, a sand vendor, a vendor who's going to give you a brick. And once you're putting a particular structure, a particular area, you have to put concreting, which again takes some subtask, concreting. Let's take painting. First, someone has to put the putty. That's a subtask. Second subtask could be the first coat of paint. So we can actually divide it into subtasks and we can divide further divide down till it's been doable and understandable. Once we have created the task and the subtask, the next task is to develop a work breakdown structure. In the work breakdown structure, this is the task. If you can see planning, the subtask includes research audience, compile asset, survey audience, Combine research, collect deliverables. On this column, you could see the status. Research audience is complete and whom the work has been assigned to, the start date. And you can see a progress chart here. We call this as a Gantt chart. It spells G-A-N-T-T, Gantt chart. On this again, you can see a second task. You can see the subtask, that is this device plan. The second subtask is what we call as phase one. This second subtask has further been divided into sub subtasks, approval plan, distribute plan, and get feedback. And the advantage with having a work breakdown structure is that we will be able to understand when was the start date and when was it completed. It can be shown here. In a work breakdown structure, there is a end date mentioned in terms of projector end date. So a start date, projected end date, and the end date. So we can actually understand whether is there a delay in project or not. And for any project manager, this guides them to look into status of the project. It guides them suggesting what the project currently is. The next step in project planning is task allocation allocating the task to specific team or allocating each task to specific people. And it has to be in a logical sequence. When I use the term logical sequence, let's take again, again the example of construction of house. 
I have allocated painting job to the painters, I have allocated the plumbing work to the plumbers and the electrical work to the electricians. And I have set them when they are anticipated to join for the project. Might be the painting people would be coming at last. And we don't need them on the very first day of construction. So order tasks so that it occurs in a logical sequence. So there is no over allocation or under allocation of resources. Match tasks to abilities of the team. Say for example, I've got a painter who's going to paint the uh, houses. Unfortunately, on a particular day, a mason has not turned up. So I cannot ask the painter to do the masonry. So say for example, a plumber has not turned up. I cannot ask a carpenter to do the plumbing work. So match the task to abilities of the team. Allow for flexibility. That means allow the teams to create some plannings so that it's more appropriate to create or to achieve the targets. And when you allocate the task, please concentrate or look into the personality and goals of the team members. Say for example, person one might take more responsibilities. Person two might need more detail on the project. You have to provide it. Person three might need to learn how to use a particular technology. You might not know that. That means training has to be given. So ensure that when you allocate, you also match with the personality and goals of each team member. And please don't over allocate. Because once you over allocate to a person, where the second person has nothing much to do, automatically over a period of time, person one is going to demoralize or demotivated because he's been overburdened. So task allocation has to be very clear. Estimate the time. If you look at the work breakdown structure, as I said, we have a start date and a projected end date. From that, it is more easy for you to understand how long it's going to take for the completion of the project. And it should be realistic in nature. When I use the term realistic, please look at your previous experience. A contractor cannot say that within two months, he is going to construct a two-floor building. He basically looks at his previous experience and might suggest it's going to take another seven months time to build a two-floor house. So look at the previous experience. Please look at the time again and again. Estimate the time again and again because it could always be wrong. So plan accordingly. Once you estimate the time, please do add a buffer time. Because each task, depending on another task, please provide a buffer time. Now the next step is planning strategy. Formulate an initial plan. Check with team members for input of timing, review of the task and feasibility. If the team member says that the timing has to be changed or if they say the task can be changed a bit, the feasibility, once they look at the feasibility, they might say that this task can be allocated to someone else. Revise the plan. Once you revise the plan, check with your supervisor. Your supervisor might give you some feedback. Further revise the plan. Show it to the team members, get the consents, and get the approval of the client as well as the supervisors. So planning strategy is at most important because once you have planned this project, that is how you're gonna go further along the project development. The next step is project controls, which includes milestones, which has to be very clear. Say for example, on the construction of a house, the first milestone could be completion of piling. The second milestone could be completion of basement. The third completion could be completion of first floor. The next uh, milestone could be completion of the second floor. It has to be clear and when it will be completed, it has to be mentioned. Provide job satisfaction. It is not that the team member, if they are not satisfied over a period of time, they are going to quit the job and you need people. And it is one of the major resources of a project. Allow for quality control checkpoints and communicate with the team, with the supervisors over a period of your project. Because communication, as we said, is the utmost important aspect in any project management. The next step is what we call as quality controls. Establish gates for transition to the next phase. That means after each phase, there has to be a quality check. And we are supposed to examine each critical parameter 
time shouldn't be extra. Whatever time we have said the project will be complete, it has to be on time. Cost shouldn't be increased. Whatever the cost was budgeted, it has to be on that. Quality, it shouldn't be compromised. This has not been mentioned as a step, but plan for unknowns. Whatever project you do, you should, you, you should understand that there is a risk associated with each project. Identify those risks. Identify the task where the risk could be. If it's not done before, in the sense, not happened before, but still, you should take precautions. If you want to rely on a new equipment, which you have not again used before, if it's a risky task, understand it. And when you look at risk, Please put an extra margin in the sense in terms of time and cost. If in terms, say for example, you're going to use a new equipment which you have not used before, or you're going to use, let's say, a new chemical, let's, let's say chemical experiment. You have not done it before, and that chemical is going to cost you $2,000 per milligram. So use a cheaper version, practice once, twice, or thrice, then use the expensive one. Once you practice, you know. Practice means makes a man perfect. Rather than doing for the very first time on an expensive one, practice on something inexpensive and then move on. So plan for the unknowns. Look at the risk. What could be the risk associated with my project? If there is a risk, there is always a risk management protocol which needs to be looked into. And if you have any questions on project planning, you have my email address on the very first slide. Thank you very much. 